I remember reading something Ezra Pound once said. He was talking about sculptors, mm. and he was saying that there are two kinds of sculptors. There's a sculptor who gets a piece of stone, and he sees something in it, and he keeps hacking away until he gets to that image in the stone. And then there's a sculptor who takes clay and pushes it together and creates an image. I'd be interested to have both mm. of you try to place yourselves. Which, which one of those would you see? Or would you see yourself as either of those, or both? I mean, how would you look at that in terms of the way you do things? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect the fact that it, you know, they say people are either ocean people or uh, beach people or mountain people, and you instantly Boat know what people. you are. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't feel that I'm either a clay person or a stone person. For some reason, that doesn't work for me. Uh, mm. I'm not sure what I am. Hmm. Okay. Do you mean like uh, building up as opposed to tearing person. apart? I mean like that, like. Like, like carving away the stone and finding something embedded, like editing it out, <laughs> taking the lines out, mm -hmm. and then finding it. Or, or do you mean trying to build it up? I you mean, mean those two I mean, like right? seeing an image. I think he meant it in terms of seeing an image within the stone, <coughs> as, as opposed, opposed to, to creating an image and putting um, it in the stone. Not seeing it there first, mm. in in a sense. So I've done so I've done it both ways. It's really funny because um, I remember Kenneth Rexroth talking about there being no such thing as the happy accident and I you know where, where it just works it all comes together and the muse comes down and you have this great poem and later I asked him about it specifically and what he meant was yes that can happen in an incident like suddenly it'll be there but that just means that you've always been working on that you've, it doesn't mean that it all you know it, it means both things he didn't really mean that that doesn't occur you know that experience so what you're saying is very similar like the image being there and then carving away at it or building it up I, I do both ways. Probably though, huh, with workshops and everything, I, I tend to have a bunch of like raw material coming out and then I carve a lot away. It's probably the one I go with. Even though later I might find, oh, I forgot the arms. I'll have to go back and, you know, <laughs> like draw those in. Yeah, see, I would think of that like I forgot I this section. Of that as a, I, didn't as a clay that, I didn't tell the kind of audience thing. that part of it. I would think of that as a clay thing mm -hmm. where you're pushing it pushing yeah. it together and then and yeah. then it becomes kind of, something. Yeah, but mostly I take away. It, it seems like I write it all out and then I mostly cut. Okay, well that let's let's yeah. segue into that then. Let's let's talk about your typical process of a poem. <laughs> would you how would you describe it in terms of say from from genesis to uh, ideally publication and and worldwide acclaim? I mean, how 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 does that work? <laughs> right. <laughs> Something that will just hit me is really being odd. Um, like Maxine Hunt Kingston was talking about once she got an, a story for an idea from um, the way someone's pant leg creased into a triangle. I think that's the story. Where the guy was so, like everything was so perfect about him and so uh, lockstep and calculated that even his pant leg creased into a perfect triangle. I think she was talking about that. And sometimes I'll start to notice something. You, you know how you learn a, a, a new word and or you'll learn about something new and suddenly you see it everywhere. That's almost really close to the way that and then I'll think, you know, I should just sit down and write about this. I've been seeing this, you know, and like get it over with almost kind of, although I like to sit down and write, but I just mean that it's something I'll be thinking about or it'll show up over and over again, you know. So what happens in it? You, you do that, it comes out perfect and we live happily no, ever after. No, no. Then, uh, sometimes, well not perfect, but um, like I'll know, oh yeah, I gotta cut this. But what's always interesting to me, I don't know if this happens to you, is it happens in stages and like I'll be working on one part of the poem and I'll know that some other part is really awful or terrible and I've got to cut it out later, but I won't be concerned about that because right now I'm working on the beginning part or I'm working on a, one of the sections and so I'm working on that a lot. So it takes me a long time to really finish something in a sense because I tend to have like, uh, what do you call that when you can only see a part of something? Like, like specific vision for a while until like six months <laughs> and then maybe I'll go back but but it's funny because it 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 moves like that it's, it's almost like somebody will make a comment like you should cut this or you should move this and I'll say well I'm not to that yet you know I'll get really irritated you know not that I don't like the cri I don't agree with the criticism but it's like I'll get irritated because well I'm not expected to be responsible for that yet I'm still in this part you know kind of it's sort of like that so it takes me a while actually to get it done uh, even though I send it out before it's finished sometimes that's just true but yeah, it's, it's more slow. At least now I'm learning that it's more slow than I thought it was. 
What, would what do you the, say about the that? Typical Does that make any sense? Diane McCarthy <laughs> process of yeah. getting a poem out. You know, I, I, I'm still thinking about Ezra Pound and <laughs> your other question. Um, yeah. I, I work for myth and archetype. I guess I don't think there's anything at all significant about my personal life, and yet I'm a totally autobiographical poet. And so, um, the purpose beyond that uh, paradox is that I'm looking for what is archetypal or mythic in my life that I know enough about that I can talk about. So in the poem about sapphires and emeralds in the mail, um, I'm always working with um, the myth of feminine worth being connected with beauty and um, fairy tales are about worth being turned into royalty and rewarded with jewels. And um, in female mythology, that worth is almost always sexual, the sexual jewel, and it's almost always acknowledged by the male or man. So my jewels come in the male, except that they're these worthless <laughs> jewels, and they come in the M-A-I-L instead of through the M-A-L-E. Sort of yes. and, and the M-A-L-E in the poem is the person who can't even acknowledge his jewels. Um, he is a very gifted poet um, in terms of male. Um, for me, the process of writing a poem is finding something that um, attracts me. And I guess this is where, I, again, I, I am intuitive. I trust my processes. I think when I notice something, I think I'm an old-fashioned Freudian. I think I'm noticing it because it responds to something in my unconscious. And I'm a Jungian in the sense that I think that those things in my unconscious are the archetypal stories and myths. And what I have to find, this is, this is the sculptor who is looking for the shape in the stone that Pound talks about. Mm -hmm. I have to keep chipping away until I find um, mm -hmm. the story of Cinderella or the story of Sleeping Beauty or the story of the Three Fates or the story of um, uh, the Cap of Darkness or whatever. And I am interested in images, I think, because I'm a 20th century American materialist, but I see those images as um, the icons or totems um, or whatever you want to call them of, that, that are emblematic of where I'm going to find the myth or the story that, that they signify. And I'm I decided when I started working on the archaeology of movies and books that my two myths were the myth of Oedipus and the myth of Medea. Um, and I still haven't figured out how to put those two myths together, which is part of the reason why I can't sit down and write my book. Um, because in, in, in the Oedipus myth, I'm not sure if I'm Oedipus or Oedipus's mother. Um, and maybe I'm both, but I'm, I'm not sure of that. I know who I am in Medusa, uh, in, in, in Medea. Um, that was a good slip. <laughs> I definitely know who I am there. <laughs> I am not Perseus wearing the cap of darkness. I am the lady with the snakes on her head. Um, and, uh, Another good feminine. Similar. Yeah, but in, in the, I mean, the Medea story has been my story, except that I identify with the very pagan version of that story where she s escapes because she's a sorceress and goes in, to another land, and, and, and not the tragic version of the story right. where she uh, has to kill herself as a result of the whole proposition. So I still don't know what to do with those two stories and therefore I do not know how to write this poem even though I'm writing it. And I guess in that sense I am your stone sculptor chipping away trying to find where yeah. that shape 
is. I see places of it over here, and I see places over here, but I don't know what its final form is going to be. And I'd like to know, and I'd like to just choose one, but I can't. So, so the poem, the process happens for you when you can figure out where you're at in the scheme, almost, so that, that you know where to speak from. The pattern, yeah. Yeah, the pattern that you're into. Yeah, like, am I the victim or, I, or am I the right, perpetrator? I'll, yeah, right. okay. What yeah, role am sense, I playing? Yeah. Am I the magician or the yeah. martyr? That's a lot. That's a problem. For a minute, Josie. Yeah. Um, what sort of myths obsess you very quickly? Yeah, good question. Oh, Any? Well, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, um, Rapunzel, which is really, really strange for some reason, but Rapunzel and um, I think the myths that really, really obsess me more than any are, are the ones where there's a failed love. It's almost like I don't want to believe in failed love, even though I've got lots of examples um, from real life and things like that. Uh, I don't, I don't want to believe that that there's. I want to. I almost want the lovers to come together at the end at some point, or to have a resolution where there isn't any, like, like in Rapunzel, um, his eyes get gouged out, and, you know, I mean, it's, I almost, I almost, and, you know, I know, I know, and then, and it's like, yeah, but what happened later was always my question, you know, like, like, so his eyes got gouged out, and, and it's like, no, no, that's the end, you know, or I want to know what happened, like, after they moved to after the suburbs, the after he got the eye operation, what happened, you know. And so I'm sort of trying to get to that point, like, <laughs> while I can agree with everyone, it's sort of extending beyond, the myth extends beyond what the initial incident was, something that happens all the time, and then you keep going with it almost. You know, the story you know, of Rapunzel is if about we, if we don't, being, if being I don't imprisoned, cut you off here. though, and it doesn't yeah. sound to me like that's what interests you about Rapunzel. Well, well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you guys off, or we're going we're going to extend beyond the extent of our tape.